Hello, and welcome to Three Questions, a new series in which we feature new scientific publications and ask the authors, one, what they've contributed to the community, two, why it's important, and three, what's next on the horizon for discovery. I'm your host, Mark Weber, and today I'm delighted to welcome Tianmin Xu and Abhishek Bandwaldar, who represent their team in discussing their new publication in the 2021 International Conference on Machine Learning. Tianmin is a postdoc at MIT, advised by Josh Tenenbaum and Antonio Taralba. Abhishek is a research software engineer at IBM Research, and both are part of the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab, which has funded this work as part of an effort focused on developing what we call machine common sense. Welcome, gentlemen, and thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we have your paper, uh, which is Agent, um, a benchmark for core psychological reasoning. And we'd love to ask you first, what have you contributed uh, in this publication this week? Right, so first of all, thanks for having us here. Um, so in this work, we are interested in building a benchmark to evaluate how much and uh, where um, machine can understand core concepts in intuitive psychology. So just to give you a little bit of background about intuitive psychology, it is basically the ability to reason about mental states of uh, other agents by watching their actions. So mental states include the goals of agents, their beliefs, and their desires. Um, and uh, such ability actually comes very naturally to people. Uh, even pre-verbal inference can understand many core, core concepts about intuitive code. Uh, for example, babies actually understand that the agent has a goal. And uh, in order to reach that goal, you need to find the most efficient path uh, with respect to some critical constraints. And then uh, in, that, in such a way, agent can maximize its reward and uh, minimize its cost. So uh, the question here is that we actually don't know whether machine agents that we build nowadays, such as robots, can actually un understand this kind of core concept. And there's no way to evaluate uh, currently. So we want, want to fill in this gap by presenting this benchmark to the machine learning community. Um, so specifically, the way we design this kind of uh, trials um, to test machine agents understanding about core uh, psychological reasoning um, is very similar uh, in a way that we designed the experiment to, to test whether babies can understand such a concept. So there have been many studies in developer psychology where people design experiments specifically to test whether and when babies can understand core concepts such, such as you know, goals, beliefs, uh, desires of an agent by just watching their um, behaviors. And we copy um, and develop a bit more uh, trials similar in, uh, in a similar way as people design the trials for babies, um, but then now we present it for machines and then test machine um, test whether the machine actually can also understand uh, such concept in the same way as babies do. We have a hypothesis, uh, which is actually the, the core social understanding builds on, up, upon your uh, core critical understanding. And if a machine, machine learning model need, want to succeed uh, in our benchmark, such model also need to have a basic concept about how the physical world works. Um, and um, just as what was shown in these uh, very nice uh, videos about uh, how baby understand these kind of situations. Exactly, and um, I want to pull up the the data set that you guys have created. And Abhishek, perhaps you could you could walk us through some of this a little bit. So, uh, in the goal preference task, uh, we usually test whether what kind of uh, object preference the agent prefers. So in goal preference, you usually have two objects on either side. And we show uh, the model, the video that, you know, the agent prefers one object over other. So this forms the familiarization video or the behavior, expected behavior. And then in testing, we show them two videos, one where the object goes towards an uh, the goal object that was not preferred before. And in the other case, it did go towards it. So one forms the expected behavior, and the other forms the surprising behavior. So these kind of videos they use uh, on the baby studies to see if babies understand preferences of the agent. And that's exactly what we're doing in this case, where we're showing machine learning model these videos and see if machine learning model also understands preference of that agent. Right. And so the so there's four different scenarios in the data set: goal preferences, action efficiency, unobserved constraints, 
and cost reward trade-offs. John Min mentioned, you know, where an object might be jumping over something. So you first you teach through familiarization and then you say, okay, it's surprising if they're jumping when there's no object to jump over, right? Yes. And that, those are those common sense things that we take for granted as humans, but babies have to learn in their first 18 months. Um, and so do uh, AI models, right? Yes, exactly. One of the things that excites me is that this paper represents a line of work that is really focused on this full this first 18 months of human of human developmental psychology and 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 the various stages in, of, of, of maturation and intelligence that take take place over those 18 months and so yeah. i'm hopeful this is not the last paper we'll be talking to you guys about but we'll get get to talk to you about a number of different papers uh with you and your your colleagues who are working on this let's ask the second question i want to bring this into the real world so intellectually this is super interesting um, but in the short term and the long term horizon, what are you seeing as a real world impact potential for this kind of work? And, 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 and how does that energize you to, to continue on this? Right. So um, this actually um, is related to my personal goal as a researcher. So ultimately, I want to build uh, robots that actually can understand humans and then help humans in different uh, situations. Um, so in order to build robots that actually can, uh, uh, you know, develop such uh, you know, powerful social intelligence, um, they have to have the ability to infer the mental state of humans. Um, so obviously we are doing something like that in this benchmark, but then the stimuli we are watching now are basically very simple animations. They are far from the, the real uh, human activity that we see every day in the real life. However, the, the idea here is that the, the principle that we use to infer agents in such simple animations is actually the same kind of principle we use to infer the mental state of real humans in real life. So uh, real humans also have goals. They may have different goals. They don't, they don't have such simplified goals, but they are goals nonetheless. And they want to reach the goal in the most efficient ways, right? So those principles are um, basically the same. Um, now the question is that if we build some models that have some kind of uh, you know, structures and knowledge about uh, agents in these simplified environments, how can we scale that up to real world? I think that's uh, still an open question. Um, we have some ideas, but uh, it's still uh, on a very uh, early age, yeah. early stage. But um, I think uh, you know by coming up with solutions that can help us solve problems in simple world may give us some insights about how we can solve problems in the real world. Very good. Yeah, and and and. And uh, thinking about those two, those those latter two um, uh, scenarios of uh, hidden constraints and trade-offs, you know, those are those are so fundamental to even basic human intelligence, human intelligence, and human common sense. And they're quite complex when you take them into more, you know, into more advanced settings versus a very simple setting. So I, I see that as being really relevant. What about you, Abhishek? Like, what what aspect of the real world impact and are you are you excited about and, and where do you see this going over the next couple of years so as an engineer i'm really interested in transparent systems and the way i look at this whole project and the way it fits into the whole machine common sense uh, project is uh, this kind of systems would form the low level intelligence or intelligence that uh, you know come to basic conclusions and these kind of systems would be useful for building more complex intelligence so a system that is able to tell you exactly how it came to a conclusion would be much more attractive to everyone rather than a black box system that you just cannot know how it came to a conclusion. So, so for me, uh, uh, um, a system that can understand basic goals and desires could be used to build a much more complex social interaction machine that, that not only has real world application, but that is much more reliable than you know, today's systems. And do you think the real world applications are limited to robotics or how do you, how, how, what other kinds of applications do you think are relevant here? I, I think uh, any kind of interaction. So the interaction doesn't have to be just conversational or, or robotics, but this could be part of a fleet of self-driving cars, for example. I mean, when you drive a car, you sort of have some kind of etiquette or manners you have to maintain, or it could be a, a, a chatbot talking to a customer service, or it could be anything like a, a robot working in a logistic warehouse. 
So any kind of machine human interaction, uh, this kind of system would definitely help uh, make that a much more social interaction. And when we think about the ability to reason about costs, about trade-offs, and and um, there's nothing stopping us from from exploring the area of ethical AI and, and understanding the different cost functions involved in human ethics and and making some of those trade-offs from a from a machine common sense standpoint. Is that right as well? So I, I think um, there's uh, definitely a very uh, great opportunity for us to uh, as uh, either you know cutting scientists or either as uh, machine learning researchers to, to try to think about how we can actually capture the kind of complex cause and reward that people have in our society and how we can build our system that can adapt to those kind of reward and cause. Exactly, yeah, very good. And so to close us out, what, what's next on the horizon um, beyond this paper and what do you hope comes out of this paper and what are the unsolved um, questions and answers that we need to discover. Um, so, so one of the things we are hoping for is this: not just the AI community or ML community to think in 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 the sense that uh, building more general or explainable systems. So our data set would encourage people to build models that can uh, under, uh, not only understand to do a task, but rather to uh, understand the underlying principles that govern the whole process of coming to. Con coming to a conclusion. And so we hope that you know our data set in conjunction with other data sets could be used to build models that are much more um, understanding principles of the whole interaction. Yeah. So this is basically the first step towards building benchmark for uh, machine social intelligence. But there are other aspects of social intelligence that we're not capturing in this uh, benchmark. So for example, we also have the ability to reason about other people's perceptual access. So for example, what, what uh, other people can or cannot see, and then also uh, you know, infer the belief of other people, uh, such as what people think about the world. Right? Um, now, uh, there are also the other um, aspect that's, that goes beyond what we can infer about a human's mental state. So for example, I, I do have understanding about your mental state. Now what? Now I can try to help you, right? Um, but then how I can develop a, a good plan to help you? That's another kind of aspect of the social intelligence that we also want to build. The connection between the inference about my mental state, my goal preferences, my trade-offs, and the planning side right. of the intelligence of right. now, how do I organize my actions in order to right. support your actions, right. your, so, your, your needs. Exactly. So imagine you have a robot uh, helping you in the home. Uh, the robot may have no clue sometimes that what you actually want to do. But then robot can still help you. Maybe the best way to help you in that situation is that just to uh, reorganize your home, like clean up all the all the uh, messes you, you you left. And then that maybe that's the best way to help you. But in order to do that, you, uh, robot actually need to infer what you want, and then you also have a sense about uncertainty about that inference. Um, so it's actually a very complex problem, um, and then um, that's definitely something we also want to build, uh, either as a benchmark or as uh, better models. Well, I know in the MIT, IBM, uh, Watson AI Lab, and on the campus of MIT and Harvard, uh, there's a lot of great AI planning experts, including ones that we have uh, we have funded, and um, you know, hopefully there's opportunities for collaboration with these with these two fields and to come together and in for an integrated approach once um, uh, when the time comes. Uh, I'm sure it's already started. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been this has been such a pleasure and honor to speak with you, uh, gentlemen. I know you represent a larger uh, author team of, of people who have been working together. So, I want to thank them and all your collaborators, as well as DARPA, um, which is supporting uh, this line of work. Um, uh, we look forward to to seeing uh, those those next phases. You know, I'm very excited about how you um, how you guys are looking to combine this physical common sense, social common sense and then have an eye on the horizon toward how these are gonna connect um, to, to planning so that uh, we can develop AIs that, uh, that are actually supportive and helpful uh, to, to human beings in all kinds of real world scenarios. So thank you again, and we'll, until next time, uh, be well and good luck with all of your research. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.